G'day and welcome to Outdoor Adventures. Now before I get started on my video today, I'd love to thank everyone who's subscribed to the channel. I hope you've got some ideas and some thoughts about how you're going to plan your next trip. My first video tips and tricks uh, seem to have a lot of response and people are sending me messages on how they can set up their camper and camper trail and I really love questions and I'd love to get to all of them and answer those questions. It gives me ideas of other videos that I can do to help you, the people who are interested, uh, get more out of their camper and camper trailers. Now some of the ideas today that I'm going to be sharing with you aren't my ideas, they're what I've learned over my time as a camper and uh, caravanner. And some of the things that maybe when you're picking up your uh, first Jayco Swift Outback um, that you didn't uh, get shown during your first handover or maybe you've just simply forgot and I think some of the tips and tricks I'm going to go through today are quite important for when you're setting up your camper. So before we uh, get bogged down in the uh, inside of the camper and some of the things that I've done in there I'd like to just show you a few things that I've done outside. So let's get stuck into it. Well, what I've done here is I've got the roof up and before I pull the bed ends out, uh, a small tip that I was given by the mechanic who did our first service on our Jayco Swift is, and this is something that we missed out on the handover, is your support arms for your roof. Uh, when, the, when the roof is lowered, the support arms go right into each other and fit snugly. But when you lift it up, the support arms can raise at different speeds and what we've done here is the mechanic who showed me this trick uh, explained that if you don't adjust your roof leveling arms or raising arms uh, if you get a bit of wind they can do some damage and the gentleman who did our service and i'll put a description of where i got that done in the description below show me that with your support arms here you should adjust them so they are level with each other and what he did is he actually put some marks on the arms for me so that he's, uh, we could adjust the arms up to a certain height so that means that some of the the struts here the, the raising arms are sitting neatly so you're not having too much sitting out putting a lot of stress on it so what he's done is he's put a small pen mark where I can raise the arm up or lower it down so that you've got the optimum height of each one of these poles. And I do this with each one of them every time I put the camper up. So that's just a simple trick that you might not have heard when you did your handover or maybe you've bought a second hand uh, Jayco. Uh, it just prolongs the life of these uh, roof lifters. Like I said before, they do move up and down quite easily as you can see and I've had them marked at different heights so that you can adjust them and what I'll do in the description is I'll give you a rough measurement of the height from the uh, larger arm down to the base and that will give you then a rough idea of how where you can mark your arm so that they are level and that you're not getting too much movement. So for tip number two, we're now going to draw the bed ends out of the body of the camper. Now I've seen on Facebook a few people who've been tearing the canvas uh, with the sharpness of the bed end. So what I've done with mine is I make sure that the canvas and the Velcro section is tucked away from the the support and the bed roller and then that way when you do pull the bed end out you're not going to be catching your canvas on any of this uh, sharp metal uh, the last thing you want to do is put a hole in your canvas now before we do this i always grab out my bed end supports which is just the two poles that hold the bed up I put them on the ground there and I've also done something else on the corner of my beds here is I've added a small piece of carpet 
on the corners here. So when you do pull the canvas over the end of the bed end, it just gives a bit of protection against that sharp corner and helps protect your canvas of your bed end. So let's go and pull that out now. Now, if you have a look underneath the bed, I'm going to be putting the bed and supports in. And as you know, you just simply just push your bed up, sit that in there uh, nice and neat. And once you've got these in, you can go to the other end and it's pretty much the same thing the other end. So now you've got the bed out. And like I said, I've put these carpet edges on the sharp edges of the bed end. So when I do pull the canvas over, it just simply protects your canvas um, from tearing on these sharp corners here. Just like that. And as you can see, with the canvas over, having that carpet on the corner there is simply going to protect that canvas it pulls very tight over here and i was finding that you could see a crease starting to form in that corner and simply just having that carpet uh, wrapped around the corner there it's just going to protect and prolong the life of your canvas on your bed end here's a simple idea to keep some of the bugs and nasties out of the camper when we went out on our first night, we were sitting out in the annex and we noticed that the light from inside the camper was shining directly through the vent uh, in the door. And when we went inside, we found the entire camper full of bugs. Now, what I've done to help prevent some of the bugs coming in is I've put a fly screen on the inside of the camper door. And all it is is a simple a uh, fly screen frame that you can buy from the hardware store and I've made it just a little bit larger than the vent and attached it onto the door with velcro strips and what this does is when the light is shining through the door it's uh, stopping the bugs which are attracted to that light going inside the camper and we found that it's dropped the amount of midges and bugs that we happen have in the camper by about 90 percent and it's an effective way to stop bugs coming in through the door it doesn't cost very much probably about twenty dollars but it's worth every effort and i uh, hope you find that interest uh helpful well here we are inside the camper um this is another tip of how you can store some of the items inside the camper while it's packed down and what we've got here is i've got the table uh, down in the bed position we have our barbecue that sits neatly underneath the table so if I just bring you in here you can just see the corner of it there that's the corner of the barbecue it sits nicely underneath the table there we try and utilize as much of the camper as possible so what we've got here is we've got our tarps that we use uh, for our annex section I've found that these little canvas bags are great for putting your uh, ropes and poles in and they're big enough to hold pretty much all the ropes that you're going to need, your poles, some duct tape which you can't go without. We've got our other one over there which has the pegs and the coach bolts that we use to drill in to hold the ropes up. It's got the axe and the uh, mallet and just in case we go on the sand we use some sand pegs to hold up the uh, annex and the bed ends and then if you look a bit further around here heading towards the uh, fridge end we've got our camp stove we've got a bag with some um, boots our shower tent the shower system all in bags there there's a lot more room than you think inside these little campers. But one thing you do have to be aware of is try not to go overweight. Uh, these days with so many grey nomads travelling around, uh, Main Roads Department are going to check 
uh, weights of campers and if you go over then it's going to spoil your holiday so just keep an eye on how much weight you can actually put in to your camper and if you don't know the weights that you can put in the camper here we have our compliance plate and it will have all the information on uh, how much weight you can put in your camper it's got your load weight your ball weight and the amount of weight that you can store inside the camper while you're traveling along now as you can see here the bed ends are still not put in the upright position and we'll get inside and we'll do that in a minute once we've cleared a walkway into the camper well another tip because i store my barbecue underneath the seat uh, inside the camper the power switch to turn the power on and off is located underneath the table and with the barbecue sitting you know underneath the table here we had to drag everything out to turn the power on so when we do go to go away we um, had to pull that out switch that switch on to start the fridge and to power up the battery so what I've done is I had a friend of mine who's an electrician who uh, installed the power switch inside the door of the camper here and as you can see if you have a look down here I've got my power switch here so I can now just flick that on like this and now the power is all turned on inside the camper and that way when I've plugged it into the 240 volts it can start charging the battery and I can also start the fridge as well so just another little tip that can make things a little bit easier uh, for when you're packing up and when uh, you're ready to get away on your holiday. There comes a time in every camping trip where someone has to do the dishes. You now, of course, uh, Jayco Swift uh, comes with a small kitchen and sink. But we found late at night that if you go to do the dishes, the lights from the roof uh, being behind you actually cast a shadow into the sink, which makes it more difficult to get them nice and clean. So what we've done is we've attached a light above the sink. And it's quite a simple thing to do. So what we've done here is we've put a piece of uh, steel. We've put some Velcro strips on the back of the piece of steel. And what we do is we simply place that on the roof above the sink and with one of these cheap little LED lights that we grabbed from Bunnings for about $5 we can then connect it with a magnet above the sink and now you've got all the light you need. Uh, you'll be able to see how it looks in the photo to follow. Uh, a simple idea, very cheap to do, but it'll uh, save you a lot of effort on those nights when you simply have to do the dishes. I know nobody wants to do that job. Okay, so it's late at night, you're tired from a day's activities out camping, and it's time to make your way to get some rest. Now, these beds inside the camper trailers, as you probably saw in my other video, is they, uh, they're quite comfortable. We use a mattress topper on top of our mattress. But if you're a little bit shorter, uh, getting into these uh, beds can be quite difficult. So what we've found, an easy way to... Uh, get in and out of bed and especially for those times when you need to race to the toilet at night uh, To get in and out of the bed. I've simply made up a small Set of stairs. Oh, let me see if I can get it up here small set of stairs made for some plywood uh, It's in the shape of the small step near the bed and it simply just gives you a little bit more height to get in and out of bed and if you're a person uh, that's a little bit height challenged you'll find it so much easier to simply just have a little step like this made up so that you can get in and out of bed. But there is one other tip I'd like to show you which can save you some pain. What we've done as well is on the edge of the bed end, you have this uh, section of steel here. And when you're getting in and out of bed, it can be quite uncomfortable. So. To solve this problem to make it a little bit more comfortable what we've done is we've got a, a pool noodle here 
uh, which are available from many pool shops, Clark's Rubber, and we've wrapped a bit of vinyl around it and that simply just sits over the end of the bed end. So when you do get up onto the bed, you know, you, you've got a little bit of uh, cushioning as you hop up onto the bed and it just makes it so much easier. And we found these two little items here um, have made it so much more comfortable uh, for, our, for our weekends away. Well, here's a great idea. If you haven't had a extractor fan installed in your skylight in your camper, well, here's another way you can get around it. If you're doing any cooking or using the sink, you're going to get some steam inside the camper and even fumes if you're cooking breakfast. This is a way that you can extract all of that smoke and steam out through your skylight. Now what I've done here is I've placed the fan which is supplied with your camper that usually sits above your bed into the skylight. And what, as you can see here, what we've done is we've installed it. We can easily switch it on there. If it's in this position, it's going to blow some nice uh, fresh air into the camper. But if you want to extract smoke or steam out of the camper, all you have to simply do is flick it up the opposite way. You can then close your screen and you're going to extract any of that nasty stuff out of your camper, keep the air nice and fresh. Uh, a great thing, a great tip, so you don't have to go to the expense of putting an extraction fan inside your roof. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Tips and Tricks Part 2. I hope you can take away some of the ideas that I've shown you in the video. Uh, I'll be making another tips and tricks video later on as ideas come to hand. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. And if you have made any mods to your camper or you've got some ideas, please leave them in the comments below. I'm always learning, as we all are, and I hope you've found this informative. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.